I always say that the NBA is a never-ending drama. From fist-clenching games, to plays that make us scream, to the anxiety of free agency, and more. But sometimes the NBA shocks us. It makes us cringe and think, why are they doing that? Well, that's what happens when you have a mix of NBA players and police. There are some cases when you wish you had them there like in the Malice at the Palace when a riot ensued between players and fans. Do y'all remember that? It was mayhem and insanity at its highest level. It sounds like we should do a video on that at some point, but let us not veer off topic too much. Now, a lot of NBA players have rap sheets and have been arrested. Players such as Dennis Rodman, Charles Barclay, Deshaun Stevenson, Jason Kidd, Jason Williams, and Kobe Bryant. But none of these players ever got arrested in the arena. But the three guys who we are highlighting today have been arrested and or harassed by the police while in the arena or on the court. But before we jump in, please remember that if you've enjoyed the video thus far and can't wait to see some of the best police escorts in the NBA, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and make sure to tell your friends and family about the journey we are about to embark on. Now let's dive in a bit deeper. The first person that I want to highlight that had a police run-in is my Masai Ujidi, the president of basketball operations for the Toronto Raptors. Masai, since the situation, has been having trouble sleeping. The incident really shook him up. It happened during the 2019 finals, and it happened right after the Raptors won the championship. The Raptors were on the court celebrating, and from the back came Ujidi, who wanted to join his team, but the local sheriff stopped him, pushed him, and wouldn't let him through. It was initially reported that the deputy with Alameda County Sheriff's Office was allegedly pushed and struck in the face by Ujidi at Oracle Arena. The alleged incident happened after the officer denied Ujidi access to the court because he didn't have the proper credentials. Alameda County Sheriff's Office says the NBA had asked them to strictly enforce the credential policy as they did not want fans or unauthorized personnel trying to get on the floor for the trophy presentation. Ujidi came from the back of the arena to the court and ignored the officer's request to show his credential. The Sheriff's Office said that Ujidi then allegedly pushed the deputy, who pushed Ujidi back. When Ujidi allegedly pushed the officer again, Kelly says his arm struck the officer in the jaw. A Warriors fan who witnessed this incident said the sheriff's deputy didn't ask for any credentials before putting his hand on Ujiri's chest and pushing him. That's when Ujiri then shoved the officer back before bystanders intervened. There was a video that shows the moments after the alleged altercation as a man attempts to break it up. Kyle Lowry comes into the shot shortly after, pulling Ujiri away. Now, just weeks ago, the Toronto Raptors president had been publicly vindicated with the release of video footage that showed the Oakland area sheriff's deputy shoving him aggressively in the minutes following the Raptors' NBA championship win. The police officer who had been working security at Oracle Arena had sued Ujidi, claiming all sorts of mental and physical distress over the brief confrontation, but the video evidence showed Ujidi was in the right and the officer in the wrong. When the footage came out as part of legal proceedings, Ujidi said, You have a lot of time to think. What if this had gone the wrong way? What if there wasn't an arena full of witnesses? Maybe I would have acted a little differently then it starts to mess with your mind. I guess we should be thankful that Kyle Lowry came in to grab him at the right time. Disappointing uh, situation there right before one of the big moments uh, in Masai's career. Next on the list embarrasses me. The Knicks don't make national news often anymore, but when they do, you can count on it being terrible news. Charles Oakley, who played for the Knicks from 1988 to 98 and is a local icon for Knicks fans, was arrested following an in-game altercation with security guards at Madison Square Garden. In an embarrassing display, security escorted Oakley from Madison Square Garden during a New York Knicks game against the Los Angeles Angeles Clippers, where the New York Police Department arrested Oakley and charged him with three counts of assault and criminal trespassing. Oakley said, What happened is me and four friends went to the game tonight to watch the Knicks and Clippers. We did sit down, trying to have a good time. Next thing I know, I was asked to leave the building. I asked why, and they said, You have to leave because someone ordered you to leave. And I'm like, I've been here four and a half minutes. In a statement released after the incident, the Knicks said there were dozens of security staff, employees, and NYPD PD that witnessed Oakley's abusive behavior, and everything Oakley has said after his arrest is pure fiction. The Knicks also added that he was a great Nick and we hope he gets some help soon. They were basically implying that Big Oak had some problems and that he was a bad person. 
which isn't true. It was disgusting and makes players not want to come to New York while Dolan still owns the team. The fallout continued after the incident when team owner James Dolan made a rare media appearance on a New York sports talk station to address the issue. Dolan confirmed a report that Oakley had been banned from MSG and explained his reasoning, which he says is simply a matter of public safety. Dolan said, It's not necessarily a lifetime ban. I think the most important thing with that is that we need to keep the garden a place that's comfortable and safe for everyone who goes there. Anybody that comes to the garden, whether they've been drinking too much alcohol, they're looking for a fight, they're abusive, disrespectful to the staff and the fans, they're going to be ejected, and they're going to be banned. Because everybody has a right to come to those games and enjoy them, and no one has the right to take that away from anybody else. In this case, that did happen, so we are going to put the ban in place, and hopefully it won't be forever. Big Oak was clearly infuriated and made some vaguely threatening statements toward Dolan in a New York Times article. But Dolan said that he was not afraid for his safety and that he didn't think Oakley's previous remarks should be taken seriously. Dolan then explained that he believes Oakley may have anger or alcohol issues, which isn't true, but Dolan rolled with it even further when he said, I think that Charles has got a problem. I've said this before. We've said this before. We've said it one time that, you know, he's his own worst problem. He has a problem. People need to sort of understand that. He has a problem with anger. He's both physically and verbally abusive. He may have a problem with alcohol. We don't know, right? But those behaviors of being physically and verbally abusive, those are personality problems. Charles should never have made it to his seats, and that's on us. And when you think you can't be disgusted more with the Knicks, they say, hold my beer and watch this. The next incident involves the Knicks again, but this time with Super Nick fan Spike Lee. The Oscar winner is the Knicks' most high-profile fan and has been attending basketball games at Madison Square Garden for decades. But one day, James Dolan struck again. A video clip of Lee surrounded by Madison Square Garden's security guards went viral on social media during a Knicks game in early March this year. Spike Lee immediately went on ESPN's first take to explain that guards harassed him for using an entrance that he's had access to for the past 28 years. The guards said, cited a new policy, but Lee said he was not informed of the change in the entrance. In the video, Lee is heard telling the guards, you want to arrest me like Oakley? Spike said Dolan approached him after security guards finally allowed him into the arena, but Lee told the team's owner, I said I don't want to talk about nothing. Spike was upset because he could have been notified about the entrance policy and not harassed by security guards, but Dolan plays by his own rules and his rules are what makes him feel good and is convenient for himself, while not worrying about anyone else's feelings. After this all happened, Spike said he would not be returning to Madison Square Garden for a Knicks game for the rest of the team season. But to be honest, he wasn't going to miss much because the Knicks were a joke and of course, COVID. The Knicks have a knack of adding fuel to the fire by taking no accountability and placing the blame on others by saying in a statement, the idea that Spike Lee is a victim because we have repeatedly asked him not to use our employee entrance and instead use a dedicated VIP entrance, which is used by every other celebrity who enters the garden, is laughable. It's disappointing that Spike would create this false controversy to perpetuate drama. He is welcome to come to the garden anytime via the VIP or general entrance, just not through our employee entrance, which is what he and Jim agreed to last night when they shook hands. These incidents involving police are embarrassing. They are stains on the NBA's reputation and they need to do better. Hopefully moving forward, things like this don't happen again. Which one of these is the worst in your opinion? Or do you think there are others that are worse? Let us know in the comments below.